Hi again. This is part two of the lecture about aperture and shutter, your two most important controls that you can piece out with once you know them. Okay, so um, remember we said that the aperture is a window. And the shutter is a curtain. Right. Now the aperture controls the quantity of light right. and the shutter controls the time, the amount of time right, that the light comes into the camera. So those are important things to remember as we're working on this. All right, so we've got window with quantity and shutter with time. Or what? Or curtain with, uh, with time. Which color? We've got blue, so we'll use blue there. All right, so we've got the curtain with time. Now remember, um, I told you that these guys get together. They work together to make an exposure. An exposure is a photograph, right? You make one all the, every time that you use your, every single time you use your, your phone camera, you're making an exposure, right? You actually have those same controls in your phone, but they're tiny, whiny ones. Um, so the size of the aperture is represented by numbers. They're called F numbers, not that kind of F, okay? But I'll tell you what it means later. Remind me. All right, so they um, will often be, you'll like see like an F1. I mean, actually, let me write these in the color that, so it might be a little easier for you guys to remember it if it's color-coded, okay? Um, so the aperture will, will have like an F1, F2, F3, whoops. Sorry about that, not F3. How about F4? <laughs> um, uh, F8. We're gonna make this pretty simple for you guys so you can get you can get the idea. F16, F22, F32, and sometimes you might even have an F64. I'm gonna write it over here just because I kind of ran out of space. F64. So these represent um, size of the window. These numbers represent that. And the smallest number is the largest window, right? It's opposite. So we've got the smallest number being the largest window. And as I go through here, you'll notice that the larger the number, the smaller the window gets. Until you get a little teeny pinhole at F64, you can't, it's like even smaller than the tiny little dot, you can barely see it. All right, little tiny pinhole size. Um, so why do you think it is that the uh, smaller the number, the larger the opening? Easy, they're fractions. If you, if you did okay in fractions in grade school, dude, you got it, okay? So one over one is the biggest, one half, one fourth, one eighth, one sixteenth, one twenty second, one thirty second, one sixty fourth. Boom! How easy was that? Right? It's pretty easy. Um, even if you're not good at math, you can understand these pretty basic fractions, right? So that's why the smallest number is the largest size. It's the whole. It's the whole pie. And as you go down. It cuts it in half, right? So that's half the size, half again, half again, half again, etc., until you get to the very smallest hole, pinhole that it can possibly be. Okay? Now, when we're looking at the shutter, so let's put aperture is right here, just so you know. When you're looking at the shutter, the shutter is right here. It's the speed of the shutter is also represented in numbers. So we're gonna start the kind of the same way. We'll start with a one, then we'll go 15, 30, 60, 125, 250, 500, 
Um, we could probably do a thousand and maybe even 2,000, 3,000. Some people have shutter speeds that go pretty fast, right? Um, and so once again, these numbers are fractions. Woo! Now, the difference is when you look at the F numbers, you'll notice they always say F1, F2. That's how you know it's the aperture, okay? Um, when you look at the shutter numbers, usually the shutter numbers will have the fraction on there. So one over one would be one second, right? One fifteenth, one thirtieth, one sixtieth, one one twenty fifth, one two fiftieth, one five hundredth, one one thousandth, one two thousandth, over, 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 right? Um, so this would be a long shutter speed, a very slow shutter speed, okay? 1,001, that's a long time, right? And that would be a 15th of the second, a 30th of the second, a 60th of the second, 1 25th of a second, 1 250th of a second, 1 500th and 1 1,000th, et cetera, et cetera. This is slow, this is fast. So slow shutter speed. Oh, doesn't want to write for me now. Okay, and all that means is the shutter, oh, the curtain, right? The shutter opens slowly or it opens really quickly. That's it. It's pretty simple. And that's how these guys work together to create an exposure. So this exposure right here is created by, by, by the aperture and the shutter working together to make that exposure. Now there's a fun little trick and I'm going to tell it to you, but I'm going to have a whole little mini lecture about it as well because it's my favorite one. It's called the Sunny 16 rule. Now the sunny 16 rule happens, let me see if I can get rid of some of my circle that I drew over here. <laughs> Having a little fun with it. The sunny 16 rule means that if you are in, in a bright sunny day, right? Um, if you're outside and the sun is shining, like no clouds, and any time that the sun is at least 20 degrees above the horizon, right? So it's up a little bit, 20 degrees isn't much, it's just a little bit up. Anytime the sun is 20 degrees above the horizon and it's full sun, you can use this sunny 16 rule. And you can use it a lot more than this, but this is how we start it, right? And it makes it really easy to remember. This is what made it easy for me to remember when I was taking photography. It was the sunny 16 rule was just the bomb. So full sun, right? You gotta have that sun shining, right? And then you set your aperture at f16, right? There's that 16, f16, and your shutter speed at 250th of a second, right? One over 250, right? So you got f16, 250, and you always have your ISO at 200. I want you to put, if whatever camera you have, I want you to make sure your ISO is, put, is set at 200, not on automatic or any other thing. Make sure it's, it stays at, at ISO of 200 at all times during this class. Then, this is your starting one. You can move these things around, and how cool is this? You can use this same Sunny 16 rule to take photographs in cloudy in fog, cloud and fog conditions, um, in super bright conditions, like, like unusually bright, like maybe at the beach, um, on the water, or in the snow. Right, that's extra bright, even more bright than just the regular sun because of all that reflection coming back, right? Um, and you can use it in dark conditions, like even nighttime conditions, indoor conditions. It will always give you the perfect exposure and that's super exciting because it allows you to take the perfect exposure, the perfect photograph that ex is exposed properly every single time, no matter where you are, what time of day it is, but this is your starting point. You start off um, with your aperture at f16 and your shutter speed at 250th of a second. That's always your starting point with your ISO at 200. Okay, that's it for now. I'll be back with part three of aperture and shutter, the relationship. Just kidding. See you in a few, guys.